this message. I got two things that I want to bring to you today. Praise God. And I want to start in 2 Corinthians 1 20. Praise God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 1 20. Praise the Lord. Somebody have it? You got it, Josh? Yes, sir. Read it. Second uh, Corinthians 1 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Praise God. Did you hear that? Amen. Is there any promises that's not answered? Yes. Can he can God say no to a promise? No, there's not. <laughs> All the promises of God in him are yes and amen. He cannot answer what's promised you in the Bible. If you're praying about it, God can't say no. Praise God. Because he's bound himself to uh, answer yes. That's yes, what the Bible says. And, and you know, see, I, I thought, the way I've been feeling the last three months, I thought... <laughs> I was tempted to think that I was left out of the promise. But as I studied the last two weeks, I know that's not right. Every right. promise in the book is mine if I have faith and determination and persistence to go after it. Like one preacher said on TV, he said, you got to hammer and hammer. You got to, you got to. That's what Jesus taught. In the 11th chapter of Luke and the 18th chapter of Luke, he taught persistence. Yes. Praise God. If you're asking the Lord for something and he doesn't answer immediately, that don't mean he's saying no. Right. <laughs> I felt like it myself. It's been tough for the last three months. But I, I, I'm looking at the scripture and I'm saying, Lord, I repent of my unbelief. <laughs> because all the promises of God, he says. You, he, can, he can't answer a promise, no. He can take a while. That's why he taught in the 11th chapter of Luke and the 18th chapter of Luke, he taught persistence. Keep in there. I think of the 15th chapter of Matthew, the son of Phoenician lady. Wasn't, she wasn't a Jew. She wasn't uh, part of the family of God. And the New Testament hadn't even started yet, but she, she uh, <clears throat> took advantage of the Old Testament. She came to Jesus and said, my daughter needs healing. You know what the Bible says? Jesus just walked away. Didn't even answer I felt like the Lord asked me one time, George, would you worship a God that just walked away and wouldn't even answer you? He had me on the spot. He had me on the spot. I thought, man, Lord, my faith is not sufficient. And I found out this last three months that I've kind of let my faith down. And the Lord is trying to build it back up. Praise God. I, it wasn't in our, I knew the scripture was in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 1.20, but I hadn't thought about it for a long time. And it came to me the other day, and I said, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All, Praise the, God. all the promises of God are, are yes. You can't answer no. If I'm asking God, for something that's promised me in his word. I think it's Psalm 103. He forgives all of my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. I think it's uh, Exodus 15, 26, where God was talking himself. He said, uh, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God and do right in his sight and keep all his sins statues, you know what God says he'll do? He said, I'll heal all your diseases. Yes. I won't let the diseases of Egypt, uh, in other words, diseases of sin get on you. Because he said, you know what he said I am? I am 
the Lord that healeth thee. <laughs> now God said that. Praise God. Lord, do you believe? <laughs> Praise God. Well, uh, you got some scriptures that we'll just read. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. Oh, yeah, see, I'm studying this, I learned a little bit more about the sonship that we have under God. You know, uh, Jesus said the Old Testament saints were, were sons of God, but not in the same sense we are. Because <laughs> we've been born again. Praise God. I learned the difference between uh, redemption and being born again. It's not the same thing. You know what redemption's for you? For? What redemption is for? Save your soul. It's what? To save your soul. Amen. It's, uh, Ralph Hill says it's God's uh, roadblock to hell. And it come by Passover. But the uh, born again experience comes by water and spirit. They're not the same. Born again experience, you get in that by water and spirit. And it's not for your soul. It's for your spirit. The Bible says God's spirit witnesses with our spirit, not our soul. <laughs> He shed blood for the redemption of my soul. He told Moses, I've given you the blood. It's on the altar. And it's for the atonement of your soul. Praise God. But the water and the spirit is going to make you a New Testament Christian. It's going to make you a born again son of God. Sonship. You know they had some... I didn't realize how much sonship that the Old Testament saints had under God. Well, Mary come out looking for the body of Jesus and she thought they carried him away. He spoke to her and she knew who he was and he spoke. And you know what he told her? He said, go tell my disciples that I ascend to my God and their God to my father and their father. Yeah. Were they in the new covenant? No. Not but but sonship of the, uh, you're a child of God. Go tell my disciples that I send my father and your father. My God, your God. He was calling God their father right. before they were born again. So it had to be through redemption. Had me through the old covenant. Jesus told his disciples to come back. The devils are subject to us when we use your name. He said, don't oh, rejoice because of that. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That was before Passover, before Pentecost. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm learning. I, I, I'm, I'm learning. You know, like Brother Reeves said, people get an experience with God and they don't know what to call it. So the, they, 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 think they know in the Bible it talks about being born again. And so that's what they call it. Whether they know what they're talking about or not. <laughs> Praise God. I know I did it. I thought I was born again. And one day the Lord spoke to me. He said, George, I, I, I heard it inside of me. It's still a small voice. George, how do you get born again? You know what I tell them, what most people say? Well, you just ask Jesus to come into your heart. He said to me, is that what I told Nicodemus? And he had me. I said, no, no, it's not what you do. He said, why don't you say what I say about being born again? So guess what? <laughs> Since Jesus corrected my theology, I said, if you want to be born again, get baptized in Jesus' name. Get baptized with the Baptized with the Holy Ghost just like they did at the day of Pentecost and Acts 2 speaking in tongues and then people heard them. In Acts 19, Paul said he baptized 
about 12 disciples in the name of Jesus and laid hands on them and they got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. They got what John the Baptist would have liked to have. John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost, but he didn't have a baptism. He didn't have this dimension of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you understand that? You understand where I'm coming from? <laughs> I got it. And you know, according to Deuteronomy chapter 7, I'm a special child. That's what God told his people. See, I want you people to be a special people under me above all the people on the earth. Praise God. I could, well, uh, I don't know, Lord, I, whether I should preach this or not. And I felt like, well, is it scriptural? I said, yeah. Boy, you preach it whether you feel like it or not. Praise God. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. Yeah, you teach us what the scriptures say, whether you feel like it or not. Amen. And so I, was, I got a few more scriptures here. Oh, something I learned. Praise God. You know, redemption and adoption. The Bible says in Galatians 3 that God gave us the spirit of adoption. And he said that in Romans 8 too, I think. God gave us the spirit of adoption. Spirit goes into our spirit. The blood that he shed washes your soul. That's what Revelation 1, 5. Thank God that he washed us with his own blood. That's what the Bible says. He washed us from our sins with his own blood. Yes. But uh, uh, so redemption and adoption is not the same thing. But here's what I learned. Redemption paves the way for you to have the spirit of adoption. You got to deal with your soul first. Right. Commit your. <laughs> Am I making any sense? And you're looking at you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I love this. I love learning this about the Bible. That adoption and redemption is not the same, but redemption has to come first to prepare the way. Because God isn't going to adopt some old sinner in his, his uh, family. He first sheds the blood and washes them from their sins, and they're, they're standing just before God because the blood cleanses you from your sin and then so you're cleansed from your sin he can take you a step farther through the new birth and make you a special child before God you know see that's why I like to see this little church make it this little church because we believe that here sister Linda believes that I believe that praise God and, and not everybody teaches this if they knew it they teach it Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Praise God. Well, anyway, let's see. We got some more scriptures here. Praise God. I became a redeemed son of God. You know, I like Brother Lee said, we're all sons of God by creation. Mm -hmm. You didn't create yourself. I didn't create myself. So God is the creator. And but that so that makes him the father, God the Father, because he created things, created us. But uh, that don't make you a saint. He has to wash you with his blood in order to get you cleaned up. Praise God. And so when 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 I accepted the call of God on my life. Like John 15 says, you didn't, Jesus said, you didn't, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Right. And boy, God. that's the truth in my life. That it really, you know, I wasn't looking for Jesus when I got saved. I wasn't looking for him at all. He just come tight, knocking on my heartstrings. And I felt it. I, knew, I went forward and I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same for that one simple experience I had with God and because I became a redeemed son of God. Not a lost son, not a, not a sinner, 
but I became a redeemed son of God. So I can say, God's my son or my, my father. It came by the blood of his sacrifice to make me reconcile to God. Praise the Lord. I already mentioned Luke 11 and Luke 18 where Jesus mentioned persistence. <laughs> that troubled me. <laughs> God, if all the promises are yes and amen, why do you take so long to answer them? Because you can't answer anything except the answer. Yes, so I said, what takes you so long? And it, this is what come to me. I didn't hear a voice, but it come to me. I'm testing your faith. You got faith? The Bible said, Abraham had faith. He believed God. And you know what it was? God says, that makes you righteous. It was counted to him for righteousness just because he had faith. And he had that faith when he had no manifestation. No manifestation of faith, but he still believed God anyway. Yeah. And, and you know, I, that's like one preacher said, kind of hard. <laughs> but it's what the Bible teaches. We just, well, yeah, Sister Ada said, hard on our flesh. So you know what? We just, well, they put the flesh under and let the Spirit guide us and, and uh, lead us like the Bible says. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. You want to be a son of God? Get washed in the blood. Give your life to Jesus. You want a, a special sonship? Get born of the water and the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know anybody else that teaches this? There are some around, but I don't know any, any close at hand that really teach this message. Praise God. That's why I tell people I got the best thing in the world. Because I've been... I've been redeemed by the blood. I've been born again. There's three elements involved in being born again. Jesus said you're born of water and spirit. And Peter said you're born of incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And that word is logos. In the beginning was the logos. In the beginning was the word. God's investment in me is a part of himself. Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> Praise God. Let's say that again. God's invested in me. He, he, he took seed from himself and put it in me. Hallelujah. He caused me to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. A couple more scriptures and then I'm going to close. Praise God. Yeah, Romans 8, 15 talks about the spirit of adoption. James 2, 19. <laughs> It said the devils believe and tremble. The devils believe, have faith, believe and tremble. But they're not saved. Praise God. Let's, let's look at that scripture in, in James 2, 19. Let's just look at it. Sometimes that helps. Praise God. I can take these pages to cooperate with me. Praise God. James 2, verses, verse 19. Verse 18 says, Someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. James says this, Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, oh God? Do you want to know, oh foolish man? I read my own writing. That hath that faith without works is dead. Praise God. Now I think about Abraham when I read that. How it says in Romans chapter 4 that. He had faith in spite. It didn't look like it. What God had promised him 
children. And he didn't have any. And he's old, 100, almost 100 years old. But he had faith. He, he just believed what God said. And, and that, that's what hit me this week. You know, I've been kind of under the weather for the last three months. But I feel like this last two weeks, the Lord dealt with me. Am I true? Did I tell you the truth? Just because you got to hang in there and persist doesn't mean that his word isn't true. He forgiveth all mine iniquities. He healeth all my diseases. Healing is promised to the children of God. Deuteronomy chapter 7, 15 says this. I'll take away all sickness. God says that. I'll, let's go back. Let's read that one. Deuteronomy 7, 15. Praise God. I, this is a blessing to me. Deuteronomy, the rest of Deuteronomy 34. So I've got to turn some pages back here. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I love this. I love this. Uh, and sometimes it, the Lord said, do you believe it? <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, 7 and verse 15. Well, I don't know why I'm not finding it. If somebody had it, I, I've got, it says seven, but I. And the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses and put none of the evil disease or fevers which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Yeah, amen. I found it. Praise God. The Lord will. You know that word will? I didn't used to know what that word meant. That word will meant so much. The one day I look, read Luke 11, 49, I think it is. So then spoke the wisdom of God and said, I will. <laughs> he didn't say when. He just said he would. Persist. Hang in there. I'm, I, I'm here to do. I'm preaching to myself the way I've been feeling for the last three months. Praise God. The Lord will. Show you his will. What, what he wants. You know, 3 John 2 in the New Testament. John said this. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prospers. Woo! How's that for a promise, huh? <laughs> Praise God. The Lord will take you. He, he, he will. He will. He will. Take away from you all sickness. Take it away. And will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt, which you know, but he'll lay them on your enemy. Who's your enemy? The old whispering. Boy, he's in for something, isn't he? Praise God. All right. Yeah, let's see. I, I might have one more scripture here. Praise God. I, I guess uh, I guess we'll stop there. Praise God. Justified by faith. Uh, anybody have a question or a comment on on these scriptures? Sister Hussey, you got anything you want to add? Praise the Lord. Josh? I have something to add. Uh, something to help me get through when times are hard is uh, Hebrews 12, 11 says, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. <laughs> Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceful, peaceful fruit Ooh, of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Praise God. See, that's just like saying, you hang in there, and finally you're going to be in peace about it. God's going to send you peace. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Rose, you got anything you want to add? <laughs> Praise God. Sister Eddie, you always got something. Well, I have to stop and look up will on some of it. It means 
expression future tense is what it can mean and it says expressing a strong intention or assertion about the future amen and the bible calls that the word of wisdom yes praise god and he makes you a promise to you luke 11 uh, 49 is where the lord taught me this some years ago praise god you know, he taught me this about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge several years ago. But he's been teaching me about redemption and adoption recently. Praise God. I saw it in John 3. The first 13 verses, you heard me say this, the first 13 verses of John chapter 3, he is talking about the kingdom of God. He told uh, Nicodemus, uh, if you want to be born again, it takes water and spirit. Praise God. In the 19th chapter of Acts, Paul baptized 12 believers and laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. That's water and spirit. They were born again then. They were sons of God before that, but they weren't born again sons. That's the difference. Hallelujah. Oh, sister, I see, I'm glad I know this. There's a lot of apostolic Pentecostal that don't really understand this. I didn't at one time. That's been open to me fairly recently. But in John chapter 3, verse 113, he's not talking about salvation. He's talking about what happens after you're saved. He leads you forth into the kingdom of God. Gives you, uh, uh, makes you a joint heir with Christ. When he gets down to verse 14, then he starts talking about salvation for your soul. See, those first 13 verses is for your spirit. It's your spirit that gets led in God's spirit, but it's your soul that gets washed in the blood. And that's that's what he's talking about in, the, in verse 14 on down through there. He said, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten the Son, that whosoever believes in him, believe, faith, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's talking about salvation there. And once you get that part done and get your soul saved, then he can take you by water and spirit into the kingdom, make you a joint heir with yeah. God. <laughs> I'm wound up. Like my, my nephew Aaron says, sometimes I get wound up. <laughs> Praise God. Luke 11, 49. It shows you something. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, now who's talking? The wisdom of God. And what? I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. The Lord asked me when I read that, he said, when the wisdom of God speaks, what's the next two words? I said, I will. God said, I will. That's a revelation of his purpose. Plan. Yes. His will. It is. Yes. When he speaks the word of knowledge, he's just telling you facts. It's not a revelation of his will at all. You know, he, he told Ananias, oh, Paul's down on straight feet and he's praying. That, that's just facts. But when he told him, Ananias, he's a chosen vessel to bear my name. That's a revelation of his will. Yes. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. We, we got the best thing in the world. And I'm going to say, well, anybody else have a thought they want to have? I guess I'll wait. the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name, which means we are a part of that promise. Mm -hmm. 
There's another place, and I don't, I, I just don't remember where it is right now. But it says, God is going to confirm the promises that he made to the fathers. He's going to confirm it to us in this day and time. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Let's stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's worship. Let's lift up his name. Hallelujah. 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 He cut the Lord Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so glad that you baptized me with your spirit. I'm so glad you washed me with your blood. I want to hallow your name because I believe salvation comes through your name. And none other. There's none other name. Give another to heaven where we must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. It's the name that's above all names. It's the name we're called by. Such a wonderful thing to be called by the name of God Almighty. Go with us. Draw us close to you in Jesus' name.